I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. I'm Arthur Boyle of Performance Appraisal Services. We're residential real estate appraisers with a company founded in 1994 by Mike Gianelli and I in the basement of my house in Malden. We've since grown to have offices in Malden and Pembroke. We serve the Eastern Mass counties, including Cape Cod. A good client for us is an attorney or a private landowner or a private property owner who's going through a probate process or a divorce division of property. Call us at 781-293-6900. Ask for Arthur Boyle or Amanda Boyle Grazioso. Our first name is Performance. So please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will be recorded. And we're going right to Bruce Hughes of the Old Colony Planning Council <coughs> for potential economic development strategies for the town of Pembroke, not to include marijuana, <laughs> and how they may relate to planning and zoning. Well, hello again. Um, and the file you, you left before, some of the different things and stuff, is, is, is right here for mm -hmm. if people want to sort of mm -hmm. look through it and so forth. Then I brought copies of uh, suggestions that you folks could do. These are suggestions that you folks Thank could you. do. Hopefully we can take a look at this list. I'll put copies on these other slots in case the other folks show up. So, thank you. But these are things that you know we've done in other communities. Uh, 43D. These would be you know zoning changes. 43D expedited permitting. The growth districts. Um, the guide to doing business in Pembroke. I think I showed you examples of that the last time. But that's really a good thing. People come into Town Hall and they want to start a business. They don't know where to go in Town Hall. We've done several of these things now, and it's on the town's websites. So, I mean, that's an economic development tool right there, is that if people knew which departments they would have to go to for their licenses and stuff like that, that's, you know, this is economic development 101 as far as, you know, well, showing is, people. Is that right, doing business in Pembroke, that type of thing? Yeah, let me uh, show you a couple. I mean, I've seen, uh, when I looked at other towns, I, I, I haven't opened them up, but I've seen that category. <coughs> this is the one we did in West Bridgewater. As you can see the various things that, you know, it's like, I just thought that was really good. I mean, I've done, I've done a few of these. Other people have done them in my life. It really shows, you know, like, if I wanted to open a business in Pembroke, I guess I'd have to negotiate my way through the departments and stuff like that yeah, to figure yeah. it out. This book actually shows this. And the cool thing about this, this, this goes on the town's website. So it's not like somebody has to go to the town clerk's office and, and uh, you know, look for a copy of it. But that's, that's really a uh, useful tool to have. Other thing that I have here is... Uh, so on that... I'm sorry, yep. Um, how quickly can we get something like that done through well, you guys? Projects. When you folks decide a project, uh, when you when you tell me what you want me to do, these things have to be done by the end of the year. But realistically, I think I could have this done. You know, in a few months. I'm working on other projects. You know, but we have the template for it now. 
and I've done enough work in this town, so I think I know the departments and stuff like that. Because I'd have to talk to the selectmen sure. and find out yeah, what licenses right. they grant. Yeah. And I have to talk mm -hmm. to the fire chief and find out what he does, yeah. you know, and so on and so forth. But most towns, selectmen right. grant, you know, the things and the liquor license and all that sort of thing. So I think that the that fact that we have a template in place for that speaks it up. To, to have and put it on, on the town website. Yep. Doing business in Pembroke. Yeah, it's um, the only question is, do we want the new? Uh, no, never mind. I won't. A I won't answer the. I will answer my own question. Um, yeah, I think this is great. Yeah, if you folks, you know, if you now, folks if we if we did something like this, and this may be in your list mm -hmm. of things mm -hmm. discussed tonight, mm -hmm. along with because in our packet tonight, it's a very interesting proposal yeah. or offer. Yeah, I, I made copies of that. Did you see that? Yeah, is it about the, about the aviation thing? Yeah. Now, I looked at the zoning. I got here about a half hour early, as I usually do. So I'm down a herring room. And I'm looking yeah. at the zoning of it. But I made copies of this for you guys. This is the... Uh, oh, you did, you gave this to us tonight. Oh, great. No, I, I, well, I, well, well, Matthew, already, but Matthew somebody, did. Somebody emailed it to Matthew, Adam, he emailed it to okay. me. And then but I, Matthew and did, and what I, I did was I found the you. site in Pembroke. You did. That not a lot of towns have this much acreage available, but yeah. someone has a site for sale, and you can take a look. At, I'm not selling it, but I mean, I just... On Route 53? Just, it's, uh, it's actually, I looked on a map, it's 27 Standish Street. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. The Cranberry Park. Now, it's, they're looking, if you look at this, they're looking for 60 acres. Yep. And uh, now, now there's a single family home there. Yeah. It's a multi million dollar home, mm -hmm. but there's oh, yeah. significant acreage there, right? They won, they won one and a half million dollars for the product. Yeah. But I mean, it sounds like these people, a million and a half dollars, you know, would be something that they yeah. could probably spend. The thing is that the way I interpret the zoning map, that's zone residential A. Yes. So I imagine they'd have to do a variance or uh, something. Unless like. they've got a 61A. Agricultural, <coughs> which they might, today, which they might. I bet you they do. I bet you they do too. With a million and a half dollar house, mm. it should be on the map, shouldn't it? Um, yeah, it's on Stanish Street. The other, the other place I thought of um, right away was the golf course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although that's not as flat as they may want. Well, you know, as I said to Matthew, you guys have have an, air, an airstrip down the street, and you've had an airport in this town, so you've had a history. Of aviation activities right. in this thing, so yeah, I mean, you know, this this might be worth exploring. You know, this is an uh, yeah. agricultural. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. So I mean, this this wouldn't have anything to do with me, but we could certainly help the town if that's something that you wanted to pursue. But that's not a DLTA project. That's a decision. Sure. That this board. But I mean, you know, if you could invite Matthew to apply to them. But, um, but one of the things I was wondering about as I was looking mm -hmm. at this and this mm -hmm. is. I know there is a couple of projects that we'd like to um, attract. Mm -hmm. So one would be, you know, any other assisted living or memory care type of facility. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to outline, outline where that zoning is, where it's allowed by zoning. Mm -hmm. Well, you um, folks could tell me specifically what you'd like to see in this guide. Like if you wanted me to include on this, how would someone would do assisted living or zoning and stuff like that, I could find out the licensing details and plug that sort of information into this. These are pretty generic, but I mean, I can be as specific as you want in this thing if you ask me to do this. Mm -hmm. I really think that, I mean, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I just think that's a really, you know, it's basic information that, yeah. you know, if I, I live in Abington, so say I wanted to do a business in town. This sort of book right here would be helpful to me yeah. to do because I know Abington, but I, you know, I, I I know enough about Pembroke, but I don't know enough about starting a business. Yep. But I'll find out. So I think this would be something we want to do. We want to do. I do so. Sure, I agree. Well, and this, it's, this is something that the board would vote that you or you don't even have to vote as long as you have a consensus. This is what, what you want to do, Brian. Doing I was a document sort of like this. About the, uh, <clears throat> The site finder mm -hmm. web thing I think you were talking about. Yeah, that's um, I can talk about that too. I've done I did one of those for the town of Soton. 
And, uh, oh, Community Compact. Boss asked me to show you guys the stuff on the Community Compact, by the way. This has uh, passed these around. But this gives the town, best of my knowledge, Pembroke hasn't adopted this yet, but uh, this gives Pembroke incentives yeah. for economic development in this, too. A bunch of towns around here adopted this. Oops, yeah. Thank you. I made seven copies of this, so if you folks have That's good. That's plenty. Matthew. <coughs> this Actually, we, should, the, we should get copies for Becky, because I know she'll be interested in this. Um, sure. I'll just make sure I have a copy so I can talk about it. Anyway, I'll make sure that you folks have a copy of this. But this, this again, this is something that, you know, the town, this is something old Colony Planning Council could help the town uh, do the application for, but it's not, it's not like a, it's well, a DLT. Well, this usually goes to the, to the selectmen. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, for all that. And just making you folks aware. Yeah, I'm just wondering why we haven't jumped on this. Maybe Parker? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no risk to it. No. The only risk is not taking advantage of it. Yeah, it's one, of, it's one of those deals where it's not like they're asking the town to do a lot. It's just, it's an opportunity for you to get something. Without doing a lot of heavy lifting, right? So I mean, you know, I, I suppose I could speak to Ed Thorne and talk about this. But I just wanted you folks to see this because this has, you know, economic development incentives in it. Well, we could take some time to look at this. Say yeah. Economic development incentives. Specifically, what? Okay. Now let's see. In here, let's see. What is a community? How can, in the, in the back of it, this is how can the program benefits towns and cities? The state offers incentives communities to join the effort, including a grant program for compact communities, extra points on certain okay. grants, technical resources for the Commonwealth to help achieve their goals, which, you know, economic development and other things could be on there. But basically, it's like one of those things that if you have this, you're eligible for certain grants. It's like being right. a green community. And then you get a couple of extra points on the grants over some other community that yeah. may be applying for it's like, it's like having an up-to-date open space plan and stuff like this. I've stood on town meeting floors and said, Jesus, your open space plan is like 10 years old or something. You know, in, in order for the state to give you money for certain things, you've got to have an up-to-date right. open space plan or a master plan. Yeah. I, I've argued this on Oh, okay, yeah, then we should do this because, you know, it's all about getting money. And with the state, you know, showing them that you, you know, maybe you have to do that. Hey, I wanted to show you this. So this I is so um, that we could probably look at and kind of deliberate over and then make a request to the selectmen that we apply for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This, if you know, it meets some work. kind of need. Yeah. I was asked by I my mean, boss to bring this to your attention, so I'm doing yeah. it. Oh, what well, I was sure. To um, are you familiar with the, uh, I don't even know if it's still in effect for that matter, but uh, a bid district? Okay, business, business, improve business improvement district. district. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's mostly done in, you know, like cities and stuff like that. But conceivably, you could do this here in Pembroke. Now, there's a couple of areas that you could do that <coughs> up here. The street in the downtown where Stop and Shop is, 53, yeah. and 139, areas right. like that. Right. It's conceivable. Um, my understanding, I mean, I, I, it's not that I'm well-versed in it, but... Um, is that business owners can have a portion of their property tax, as I understand it, be credited towards the business improvement district, mm -hmm. and those funds have to stay within that district to make improvements mm -hmm. with just within that district. It might be a bit a, me a mechanism we look at from the point of view that, uh, first of all, there's no real assessment to the business mm -hmm. folks, but they are portioning a portion of their property tax to it's just keeping up that local area, if you will. Well, yeah, it's yeah, in it good shape now, but you never know over time <coughs> how slight improvements can be done. Well, so it may be a way to get sidewalks <coughs> put in certain places. What's that? It may be a good way to get sidewalks put in certain places. Yeah, I mean, well, it's just certain types of I, infrastructure from time to time. That could it might apply to I don't know if there, there's like a, a more 
shall we say, economically challenged area down in Bryanville. Mm -hmm. It seems to me something like that might be beneficial to an area like that as well, because they probably lack the most amenities to a, a something business friendly. Um, but it's not that there's a lot of businesses in that particular zone. But there's a lot of traffic that goes through there, yeah. which makes it attractive to a, a prospective business, I would think. Yeah, I mean, it's not that it can't be, uh, you know, a more vibrant area, if you will. Right. It's got a lot of traffic going down 27 back and forth. Ton. Mm -hmm. But it probably doesn't, at least right now, you know, kind of shine of business. <coughs> Again, it's more economically challenged than something like 15 and 39. We're not having a problem attracting business there. No, I'm not on the, the high, super high traffic count kind of locations at all. Yeah. I, I've done enough traffic counts over the years to totally understand that you know, the higher the traffic count, the greater attraction is going to be other businesses. Right. Yeah. I'm going to be doing traffic. I'm going to be doing turning Uber counts here in Pembroke on Wednesday, uh, 3A and 53, you know, the closed fire, whatever it is, the fire station there, or that, that corner there. Yeah, so I, I still do Parker, turning. Parker Street. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I still do turning over cats. Well, that's interesting. So I mean, that's something we could look at. But, you know, I, I think the business, the guide to doing business, would actually help the town as a whole rather than one specific area. Not the business improve. You know, that could be something we could look at. But I think this book would show, you know, help attract businesses to the town. It's easy to attract this. Now, you said that there's a chamber in this town and stuff like that. So right. this business guide could be sold through that in the town website and stuff like that. Now, the whole idea is if you want to do business in Pembroke, it's easier to do business because we can show you how to do it. Right. I felt like the site finder was something that was sounded promising. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about that. Let me get that bottom um, This is actually pretty cool. You go on the uh, town website, and I've already done a lot of the analysis of this. I've already created, I've already looked up the, the list of 100 largest uh, employers in the town, all this basic stuff. But basically, this is this would be on the town website, and it would be it'd be a database of available properties for rent, for sale, for lease, and we'd work with. First of all, does the town have an IT person? Uh, it's more or less yeah. contracted, but we do have, I guess, I think Deborah so Wall essentially yeah. is our IT person, isn't it? The For librarian? Some, yeah. I think she's more person. content than she is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, it's, but I mean, I think we have sort of, a, I'd say it's sort of a basic capacity, but not too advanced. Because <laughs> when, we've done, when we've done these, we've worked with the IT person, that's beyond my skill set, yeah. is to, oh, yeah. to get onto the, the website. Forms. Probably. Right, you yeah. yeah. might be the most qualified to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you have to create, we have to create the forms, the submissal form, submittal forms, the retrieval forms. It has to be a, a website maintained of having the you know properties listed in it and being able to retrieve it and stuff like that. So it, it does, the towns that we've done this in so far are Stoughton and Easton, and they have IT people. Updating to, it. Uh, yeah. They actually have a town employee. I think it's a great idea. I don't know why the town of Plymouth doesn't have it. The town is, uh, but Brockton has it through the Metro South Chamber and Pam McCarthy, still the economic development plan. I'm working with Stephanie Danielson at Easton to do this. But like I say, it requires the town to have a, a dedicated IT person who can create these forms and you could, there's all kinds of software, and Pembroke, uh, Stoughton, Stoughton, excuse me, they used uh, a People GIS, but that's something that they had. Uh, in Easton, they're going to do another form of GIS that the GIS person in my office understands. But it requires the town to have a GIS person to do this. Does that <coughs> conflict at all with the real estate agents and their multiple listing and all no, that? No, you know, it's, <laughs> actually, it's good for them. It's, it actually, really? it's actually good for them. I've talked to Mark Donahue, you know, you see the signs all around, Donahue Associates, they need them down here. And actually, you know, when I got the listings, I went on, um, I went on somebody called LoopNet, which does this, they have all, if you, if you type in LoopNet and you type in Pembroke, they don't have all the commercial, and I know Donahue, all, Frias, all the commercial real estate people, Conway, 
they do all this stuff. But when we did this in Stoughton, which is the first one of these, we had a, we brought them in, and we said, look, we're not trying to screw you guys over. This this actually will help you. And we showed them how it worked and stuff like that. And then we had a launch meeting. We had about 100 people there. Now it's building slowly. This was the end of the last year, but people are using it, and the real estate people see the value of it. Uh, and actually, they've gotten some. Uh, one of the things we had listed on there was that, if you're familiar, 139 and um, 24, it was this old rebar multi-story office building which sat for a long time. And somebody's bought that. Actually, Campanelli has bought that now, and they're going to split it up into multiple. But that was one of the things that was on the site. Yeah. And so it helped them. So most market. of these folks are already represented by a real estate. So yeah. this just does the the work of finding the right sites for a, a client, and you know everything else is the transaction. Yeah, so this benefit, I, I would think this would benefit them tremendously. It, it benefits them. It benefits the town. It's just, <coughs> I'm just telling you that you've got to have an IT person in town. Yeah. All the we do have. I mean, I think the assessors uh, up in our assessor's office have pretty strong GIS skills, and they've got a, a GIS contact they work with. So it's possible it could go through them. I mean, if they use people GIS, I believe, and it's possible it could be worked out through them. Perhaps I really don't know. But, but they they use people GIS. Part of the deal with this is that when these forms are created, they go on people GIS. So you know, people who pay the licensing fee, they have yeah. access to the type of forms. So I mean, that's something. You know, that's something we could do. With them. Well, I, we don't have a ton of inventory. Not like a Stoughton or. Well, let me show you what you yeah. have. Let me show you what. what I've actually done that. Um, oh, this is. I try to do my homework. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is something that, has, this was current as of when, was, when did I do this? April fourth, two thousand and seventeen. And I'll show this to you. That's right. Great. And this includes that property, that seventy-five acre property. Now, a lot of these are in the strip, you know, the shopping malls and stuff yeah. like that. Well, we know a lot of these people. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I know Stephanie Danielson, Easton Town Planner, was surprised when I showed her the list of properties in yeah. Easton. Because it was great. You used to have to go around and drive around, and I still do. But it's nice. Now you can go on a computer and go on the site and find all these properties. Which is really cool. Yeah. And I don't, you don't have to pay to be on it. I was telling yeah. you and Matthew about loop that for the yeah. sake of the, for the aviation thing. But that's a I really mean, cool website. I mean, I suppose at a, maybe at a very basic level, if, if the site finder can't be done, maybe at least we could put, just put a link to that on our website. Yeah, our well, you know, it's probably... Memory. That one's a thousand square feet. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> put that, I'll, I'll, I'll pencil that, yeah, pencil that in. For the, but, you know, when I do, if we do the... Uh, business guide, I've got to create a report, and this report, if you take a look at this, this is what I've done on this so far, but it has all the basic demographics, it has the list of properties, it has the list of 100 largest employers, it has the income, it has what makes the town attractive as far as business goes, it's got the zoning and, the, and all the areas, so there's about 16 pages worth of stuff in there already. This is, a, this is the report form that we... And it's includes done. land as well? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, it includes that site uh, somewhere in there, One, maybe on the next other page, but it actually has that big site in there. I know I put that in there someplace. Anyway. Oh, you probably updated it mm -hmm. after this. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, I saw that. Let me just see that for a second. Yeah, it's... Uh, okay. Anyway, we know it's, it's in there. So, yeah, I mean, this, 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 and any report that I do for you folks, as far as if I were to do the business guide, you would help, you'd also see a report in here. Would have, it has a community profile, if you, look, you know, it has the population and has all this stuff, which is important for somebody who wants to come into the town. They need to want to know the income and all that stuff. Where the skidding rink is, next to the uh, solar now, <coughs> how big is that guy's property here? Oh, um, the unbuilt portion is around 25, 20-odd acres. There's only 20 acres there. Mm. 
You might have an interest in putting in uh, solar, I understand. I know, more solar. Um, he has a prime site for it because he's right along the utility. Yeah, he's right there. Well, that's what they like. What is this? You took me 60 acres. Is that mostly clear zone for landing and taking off? They have like a dirigible, like something like that, or they have a. Who's this? That's where it sounds like. 60 acres of flight, keep out, no telephone poles or buildings. Vegetation, vehicles, and occasional people in or animals are accepted. How, how much land is the town owned right down here on Barker Street? Uh, 30 acres. 30? Yeah. I think it's mostly a clear zone. Of course, that's on this side. Then they the go store. on the other side. You got that's exactly yeah, where I was going with yeah. uh, Barker Street. We have, we have the 1,500 acres of swamp there that doesn't have any poles or anything out there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is this somebody looking for something? That's or? pretty, that's pretty, um, that's this thing, yeah. It's, it's in your packet. Yeah. Yeah. But they're just flying over it. Oh. True. Right. And they, they have what's the purpose of the, uh, yeah. What's the purpose? So they can dock it. It would be kind of cool. It's a, kind of a hot air balloon type thing. Yeah. Blimp. Yeah. That's going to have... Uh, it's MIT's using it for experimenting with... Instead of having a cell tower, you have a balloon that you floats the antenna up there or something like that. And the yeah. lot side is only I've 75 feet by 75 feet. Yeah. That's what, it's like any airport. It has to have you can put it right on. across the street here, and then you get all that open space across the way. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing. I'm, I'm a little more concerned about drones and other personal <laughs> flight <laughs> devices all getting allowed when you allow this. Mm. Because there's... Are you they're allowed, they're it's allowed like, now, aren't they? It's like 10,000 licenses are better out there yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, but where do you want them landing and going? It's like I always said about this guy with his private airport, which mm. isn't private at all. Um, you know, what does that bring in the future? Mm. And what rights does he have to commercial, um, you know, applications of that airport? Because it, yeah, but you're unleashing something into the community. Don't forget, even small helicopters, drones, they don't take require any fee. What did you say? 75 feet? 70, 70 everybody feet. have one. Yeah. <laughs> everybody does have one. That's what drones are all about. Well, no, days. everybody have one. <laughs> but they're about this big. Yeah, yeah wait until they're over your house taking pictures of you in your backyard. Yeah, they already have <laughs> I mean, Because they're already. No, I think no uh, matter where this project my neighbor's got one. going in Massachusetts. No, I think the air, air things are out of question. Issue, like it's, um, seems like it's just as, would make as much sense here as any other part of Massachusetts. Sounds What's like it would bring some money into the town, but I mean, yeah. You know, we turn down money every <laughs> month. Well, this is, this is an R&D facility, not... Yeah, but that tells me how long are they going to be there for. Hmm. So what? The technology proves to be successful, not successful, not as capable and commercial, what have you. I mean, these things, types of new technologies so come around every day, and then about four years later, you're hearing how they just blew through $30 million of state funds. Yeah, that's the, that's but it's really, I mean, it's risking really, everything. They have to blow it in Pembroke. That's cool. If you took <laughs> 139 and 53, we get a shot. Yeah, 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 they don't want yeah, that. They need, they need lots of open space. To do Why do they need that much open exactly. space? Because they don't want to bother people. They want to be left alone. Yeah. They don't want people screwing around with this stuff. That's why they have to have But it says 60 acres of... Have they heard of poverty yet? Yeah. yeah they no don't no wanna... telephone poles or buildings. So don't want to they said vegetation, vehicles, people, animals are all fine. They don't tend to hit an automobile or an animal, in other yeah. words. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be interesting, that's for sure. Have they heard of Carver? <laughs> <laughs> in Point South. I'm sure they've got, they got their feelers out there. You can find thousands of acres over near Standish Miles, uh, Miles Standish Forest that is just ideal for an operation like that. But maybe they don't want to go too far from Cambridge. Right? Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky if you get grant money, you'll drive to Connecticut for a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says this, this thing will uh, replace 30 cell towers. One of them. We only have like four or five in town. What, are we going to take care of the whole South Shore? Yeah. No, I think they're using this. <laughs> what is it? Our job again, like affordable housing or something? No, Take care of the regional problem? <laughs> they haven't, they haven't, they haven't, it's just one of these things to look at. This is still the boat. <coughs> they'll probably fly still 24 hours a day over Pembroke's airspace. That's what's so. windy out, I wonder. Where's that uh, thing with the available properties? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see that myself. Sure. We should get copies of that. So, um, I, I think, 
Yeah. 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 Just to change the subject for a sec. Yeah, I'll make sure you get this. Yeah, I mean, that would be great. I don't know what's that. This will just give you an idea yep. of what I've found so far okay. for available property. This was as of April 4th. Okay. You go on a, a website called LoopNet, and that's what I found. If I did a, you know, if I do a business plan, if I do a guide to doing business, I put something like that in there. And it would be as up to date. If the report comes out in December, that list of properties would be current as of December or November or whenever the thing was done. These things don't change a lot. Unless, you know, I did one for Easton in February and it changed a lot since April was. Because they do sell these things. <clears throat> and then the, uh, the EDSAT. Tell us more about that. Okay, well, we can't pay for that, but um, I'll show it to you. It costs about $4,500. And let's see. this is something the town would be on your own as far Let's as sneak that into the budget as old. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually pretty cool. This is Barry Bluestone, kind of Northeastern University. And um, they do a Summary of relative strengths and weaknesses. They do. Uh, well, that's what, so I have to pay them, right? Yeah, you have to. You'd have to pay Northeastern. Yeah. So we, you know, we <laughs> used to do this out of DLTA money, but my boss said no. We don't need to pay for these things anymore. What does that stand for? So the purpose of this is economic development self-assessment tool. Basically, what it does is it looks at the community. It's a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the community. So basically when a community looks at this, uh, well, in the Halifax marketing strategy document, the things that, that the takeaways for, that I use, I use the SWOT analysis when I wrote that. But basically, um, actions of the town government suggested by the EDSAT improve the town website improve local permitting processes, address tax delinquency procedures, zoning reform. Um, these are all, you know, conclusions that you can get out of an EDSAC could go to so, a um, marketing So, we did a fair amount of SWOT analysis when we did the master plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be, a, you know, a kind of a, a, a way for us to do that kind of work to update the master plan. I mean, 4500 bucks is short money for getting it done quickly. I'd recommend that the town do it. Yeah. You know, and some of the problems, though, I think associate sometimes mm -hmm. with this kind of an analysis <clears throat> tends to be kind of painting with a broad brush. Upgrade your zoning. Huh? <laughs> what? A, B, C, and D well, tells us what you're talking about. So right. even in master plans, you tend to get a lot of generic. Yeah, but language. I think we did a, we did a pretty good job of identifying some very specific zoning bylaw changes in that master plan that we pursued. But it went beyond the. We broke it down better. Let's we put did. it that way. Yeah, but you got to start <coughs> somewhere. And um, well, yeah, I just like we did that survey too that we sent out, and we got a huge amount of responses that we weren't there's expecting. There's a big danger with surveys, though. And I got to tell you what it is: is lay people are responding to the survey, mm -hmm. all right? Which gives you an idea. It should be directional. It should give you a, an idea of places to look, but it should be one tool in a lot to do a master plan, because a lot of people they have opinions, <laughs> and their opinions kind of come through in surveys, and you have to be so careful when you put a survey together because. There's, there's so much confirmation bias that goes into s writing surveys. There's so many surveys that I see, very specifically on the town website, that are geared towards getting the answer that they want. Yeah, well, that's common practice. Not geared towards <laughs> getting the answer that's, that's kind of correct. So you, you really have to take those things. And I'm not saying don't use them. I think they're a good tool. Mm -hmm. But they've got to be one tool out of many. Okay. Um, I think my, my concern with, the, <coughs> with something like EDSAP even if it's a really good document, uh, is there a danger that it then sort of gets filed, it kind of gets looked at, filed away somewhere, and it doesn't really maybe lead to tangible, th which I think is kind of what you were saying in a sense to like, will it lead to a, a tangible decision or a tangible outcome? Or a tangible well, it depends on that's the why the, That's why the recommendations have to be so specific, yeah. because then as a planning board or as another mm -hmm. board that may pick up and hone in on something. And oh, we're trying to address this, you know, because it's not, 
kind of open-ended yeah. type of thing. It's specific. And as I think as Andrew was pointing out, that on the master plan that we had done before, that we did get to specifics, and we did start to go down the checklist and go, okay, that's done, that's done. Um, and we're able to come out of those meetings with, we should, we should zone for a hotel and convention center. We should zone to four stories in the industrial right. district. Mm -hmm. We should, boom, boom, boom. And mm -hmm. those things could accomplish. They got accomplished. Um, mm -hmm. There were things that business owners at that time complained about that we had a bylaw that even specified the amount of loading docks they needed mm -hmm. per the square footage. The Lowe's store up there would have required something like 30 loading docks under mm -hmm. the under the zoning right, at that yeah. time. That's right. Yeah. 30 loading yeah, docks. I remember that. And they operate with two or three, yeah. whatever it is. Logistics have changed dramatically. But this is a place where a local board years. had just winged a number yeah. and didn't really do an analysis <laughs> as to what retail is needed, even to the scope and size of uh, Lowe's. The same goes for parking, too. With yeah, parking. we are over parking with yeah. the business. We got more damn asphalt up there than, than anything else. So. We can yeah, fit, yeah, we can fit another $2 million dollars of business in that parking area. area. So. Which points me to another thing. I'm sorry to change the business. <clears> but <throat> the biggest impediment I see up at that 139 53 corridor, which is our best, best growth area, is transporta transportation infrastructure, getting the traffic around. I, I'm sure you've had. Um, or, or will have an opportunity, go up there during its peak hours, mm -hmm. take a look at it. See how much we get on the board potentially here. Mm -hmm. How many hundreds of more cars are going to go into that intersection? Hundreds. Yeah. Not a few. We have a, 10 great sites up there tomorrow that if we had yeah. investors, developers come through, they would find a home in Pembroke. Mm -hmm. And yet, you get this bottleneck in my point. view of about 20,000 cars a day now mm -hmm. going through there and um, how does it start to work at what point does it become You're a choke point? 12 right yeah, yeah. <clears throat> there's not an easy way to get on the highway without coming into this one intersection <laughs> yeah. there's no way that bypasses what the state took away in 1960 which were two major roads that cut into Marshfield mm -hmm. all right gone wiped out you know, there it is, folks. Here's your new superhighway. Your local transportation, gonzo. Fit it all through this one spot. Well, they never anticipated, I'm sure. I lived here in 1960. <laughs> it ain't much around. Nashville was 3,000 plus people. Pembroke was probably around, you know, 2,500 at best at that point in time. So, you can imagine. Just the residential growth in the area coming through now. Yeah, I remember when I moved to town, it was what, early 90s, and it was a two lane 14, road, with no light. Yeah. And it worked great. And now it's a four lane signalized and it's jammed. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and they widened it as much as they could widen it without redoing the bridges on that. If we need to make concrete success, progress on our economic development side, since we're on this general topic, if we don't go solve that stuff, you know, that is critical. And we have to take a 10-year to 20-year view of it, or we'd be irresponsible as a board. My point is this. If it took us 15 years to get improvements on Route 14, okay, how long does it take to get in queue to get DOT or whoever from the state to start coming down and running through some serious, serious scenarios? as to how to get this traffic through here. About 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. Well, that's so, not really what power. You folks know what the what do you mean it's not not power? Is? That's what we have yeah. to do. Okay. We do. So, you know, Colony is, a, is an MPO, Metropolitan Planner. I try not to speak in acronyms. Anyway, it's a tip. If there's, you know, I know that there's improvements for 139 and all kinds of stuff in Pembroke. That goes on the transportation improvement program. It has right. to be funding. Well, I understand, the, I understand what's involved here. That's yeah. why I say yeah. 15 years to do this little highway. Right. Right. We're going to be on that. So here we are. We can yeah, take an, a, an approach that, well, ah, it's too long into the future for us to really even consider it. Let's worry about something else. Well, but if we funny, don't. Funny you mention that because uh, Thursday, was it Thursday or Friday, a telephone pole fell down and and uh, I don't know if somebody hit it or it just fell I down. I think that was Friday. Yeah, that was a disaster. Over oh, yeah. in uh, Marshfield, right near 
kind of right over the line. Yeah, it destroyed mm -hmm. my commit. I mean, that was I had um, to drive all the way. That must have messed things but up. But I got to tell you, <laughs> it took me from Situate to Pembroke. It took me an hour and a half. Yeah. They were talking about like delays on Route Three because people were trying to get off. They couldn't. Yeah. Then they rooted them off in Hanover. Yeah. And I came <coughs> down. That messed up. One. 139 to 53 and took a left and it was just bumper to bumper. Oh, yeah, I'm not even sure why. I had to go. I went all the way through. <laughs> I saw some beautiful scenery actually all the way through New Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> and it was yeah. Like, it was River, like, River, like, River Street, There's River Road, no whatever is beautiful. Like, you couldn't even go yeah. south because I was backed up. So was, but we, there, you've seen it on other things <laughs> how it can <laughs> totally jam up. Um, yeah, it's really uh, that that right. intersection. And here's the other thing if you have an accident on Route 3 coming south, we'll say it happens in. Hanover, for instance, or in that stretch, everybody traveling southbound is now getting off at 53 to avoid that accident that happens in that five or six mile stretch. And where do they all come down into? 53 into 139, they're trying to go to Marshfield. So anything that happens on the, at transportation level or in that, in that area severely blows out the traffic on, on, in this town. If it's headed northbound in the morning, you have an accident in Duxbury, for instance. They're hopping off at 53 in Kingston, and then you just have it going northbound. Everybody's that taking that as a the cut. But that is good for business, though. I mean, more. Who the hell's getting out of their car to go to, what do you think, all of a sudden Dunkin' Donuts pulls in an extra grand in, in an hour or something? Mm -hmm. It ain't happening that way. They're in their cars, they're pissed off, and they're going to work. Well, you know, they already got their coffee. <laughs> this is why we do a, I do something called Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. You know, me is a, U.S. Economic Development Administration, Economic Development District. And I, I write this thing every year, and transportation projects are an integral part of that because transportation and economic development go hand in hand. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, I mean, I've got to have my list of transportation. I go to Charlie Kilmer, our transportation program manager, and I get the list of projects. I see what's on the tip. And I know we have stuff for Pembroke. I've lived in this area all my life. I've been coming to Pembroke all my life to get stuff done, even though I wasn't having it. Hmm. So, and I've, Put out traffic counters and done turning movement counts on 139. One of these guys who had to run across the road, putting the road tubes across, doing that across 139 down by Route 3. It's a way to kill yourself. <laughs> but, but I've had to do that stuff. Well, it'd be interesting then if there are projects listed, if you will, or pending or what have you, that are on the state. It would be wonderful for us to see what those updates are. I'll, I'll, um, I can send you, I can send. Uh, I'll, I'll say one thing for area towns, or we'll say our neighbors. Uh, Marshfield and Hanover. Marshfield's not on ours, but and Hanover isn't on ours, but uh, maybe not in yours, but I'm, in yeah, terms of your MAPC, particular district. Yeah. But I'm saying as neighboring towns, yeah. there's been a heck of a lot state more state money poured into road improvement than you've had in this town. Yeah. How do you get south of 139, for instance, and you're coming down Route 53, and it looks like the road was put in about 30 years ago? <laughs> okay, it was. they uh, just. Think of the temerity of this. <laughs> when that sports complex or whatever went on in on the high on the roadway there, up on fifty three, mm -hmm. they had widened fifty three now to two lanes, all the way down to near that site. And when they had a lot of traffic problems initially, and they still do when you go by there on a Sunday, for instance, or a Saturday. The uh, response from the Board of Selectmen was, I guess we'll just go get some more money from the state and widen the road another mile or, two, mile or whatever it takes. Isn't that glorious? We can't get sidewalks <coughs> in 15 years. And other towns are using their clout, whether it's political or otherwise, right. to have the state pour in millions of dollars of infrastructure improvements. Now, here's my little problem. You, if you know where Muckies is, you're familiar with the area and all that, all of a sudden the road goes, yep. one lane. <laughs> And it's like everything funnels into one lane, all right? And it's crazy. Uh, the road alignment isn't even proper in the area because what we come up to the set, a set of lights if you're heading eastbound, uh, it's two lanes at the lights, but to get into the other lane, you got to kind of go around this property thing going on with Mucky's itself. No sidewalk for the most part, except for along one side, but not really developed in that area. On the south side. You know, this this is the type of thing I'm thinking of when it comes to economic development in town. Well, really, we, as a town, though, we don't have the the way it works with the state is if you want to jumpstart that process, you have, the town pays for the design. 
gets the design finalized, and then the state goes, oh, okay, yeah, we'll yeah, fund we'll, that. We'll do that. But uh, if you want the state to design and fund it, then it's the 10-year process. Yeah. So that's well, probably what Hanover is doing. They probably had an engineer come in and say, okay, get, get the design done, get all the plans ready. And part, of, part of the issue, there, part of it kind of relates back to that business improvement district thing I mentioned. The business folk are going to know best how to make, try to make improvements. So if it takes engineering costs, I understand that. And just like a DPW doing our sidewalk project or what have you, where we do the design and engineering, the state will come along <coughs> and help us with the grant to actually put it in the ground. That's what we and always tell communities about. Uh, uh, look, I mean, you have a solid case, though, to go to town meeting or go before the board select when you say, Here, here's the concept, here's the plan, <coughs> here's the cost, but this is what you're going to get out of it, mm -hmm. you know? Would you feel comfortable right now with another 300 unit apartment building going up on Corporate Park Drive or on Industrial Park? Or, uh, I should say, no, uh, they're a mess. That's Winter be, Street. That's, that's our biggest problem area. Okay. So, right. how would you feel? What if it was 40B? What are we going to feel? Mm -hmm. What can well, we do to stop it? You know, in, in other words, <laughs> something could come along that such a could be a big benefit, and on the other hand, could be a big well, it did catastrophe. Already. It did already. There was the second phase of Pembroke Woods. Mm -hmm. It never mm -hmm. got built. Right. Well, that was only 140 units. Yeah. But damn close. It's a lot if of units. If the economic climate hadn't changed by 2010 or 11, yeah. that would have got built. Yeah, and there could have been another 100. It was 140 units. Yeah. And on top of that, after that was built, they could have come back well, from this more. This is the point. Is well, that there's a whole piece of Marshfield that would come out that same way, but it would actually be in Marshfield. Mm. But the point, any major development yeah. like that would have such an impact immediately. And in some cases, we could resist it, obviously, through our zoning and, and process. But if it came through 40B right now, I don't think you could really stop it. But it and consequently, though. It's a tough time selling them because they can't get out. Yeah, it's the old adage. It's too uh, nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nobody goes there. Yeah. <laughs> but if we don't deal with those things, and... Uh, we're going to have a problem overall. We're never going to get the commercial tax revenue we should through Bryanville. We're not going to get it through the center. We're not going to do it with projects spread around somewhere in the community on very kind of like isolated spots. That's not going to bring us the revenue. We need a bigger plan. No, but there are other... Yeah, I absolutely agree with you on that. But there's Route 53 between... Barker Street, all the way up past Taylor Street to the town line, Taylor Street. Yeah. But they're all residential. Yeah, but there's a lot of land up there that has ended up becoming the landscape district. Oh, right. I would say from Congress Street South. Right. You're right, absolutely. You, you do have some good sites in there. There's some good sites in there that would be yeah. great for, you know, assisted living. Assisted living or the memory care right. or yeah. medical, yeah. Yeah. Um, which are much lower impact, right. which I think would, would people would. You know, they, uh, they wouldn't mind living near it. I, I was saying to Matthew <coughs> just the other day, I want to bring back up our uh, assisted living bylaw that uh, now three years ago was not successful getting passed. But right. we did get a industrial A and B approved. Right. right. So we took out a good portion of that. But the other primary site was Congress Street south of the Duxbury Line. Right. And we no, did I consider think. some residential areas as well, if they met certain criteria. I think that's something that we get, should promote right away. Right. In other words, for the next uh, next town meeting. And was it? Bring it back. I'm trying to remember that. Was the issue with that the making the hook around onto Taylor, Taylor Street? Street? That was the yeah. issue, yeah. yeah. And our chief assessor happened to live on Taylor right. Street. <laughs> <laughs> Not in my backyard. Yeah, if I knew that, I probably would have said something different. I don't know. <laughs> Figure out some way to... <clears throat> make everybody happy. But, uh, yeah, if we don't do the successful economic development of Route 39 53 and those remaining yeah. primary sites... But, ha but having said that, there's there's something to be said about a 15 year. 15 years comes comes and goes very quickly. Absolutely. Even though it seems like it's a long time away. 15 or 20 years isn't isn't that big a horizon, actually. No, it isn't. And, you know, maybe in a certain area like that, to have a, you know, 15-year plan on infrastructure improvement along with what we could do with design 
um, and then what we could do with you know some state funding there um, I mean because Oak Street's another area where you know I think Oak Street would need to be looked at it's all part of it it's all a big part of it yeah right. I, I don't know what the count on Oak Street is but it's, it's high. significant it's high because a lot of people get off uh, or turn left to onto Oak Street, for and instance, got, because they're going to Duxbury, well, ultimately. Would, they are, but I would also tell you that the, the, uh, the Pleasant Street light is a part of that whole infrastructure improvement. Oh, yeah. Uh, if they put that light at Pleasant Street, there's going to be a heck of a lot more traffic come down Oak Street onto Pleasant mm. and turn left yeah. onto 53. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> because, personally, I go down to the lights at, at 53. 53 and 139 and make a left there. I won't make that left. But yeah, if you set the lights there, I would. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it is all related to the same. Especially if you're going south way. to get to that yeah, story. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Sounds like I should have brought Charlie Cohen with me tonight. I can't transportation program. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys would like to be there. Charlie can answer you know, a lot of your questions about the transportation. But I, I think we should jump on that and start thinking about that along mm. with, because if we've got a plan in place to, to work on the infrastructure improvements, we can at least say that as we're looking, as we're courting businesses to come in up there. Mm -hmm. But I think the key would be 53 and getting it widened. Because there's an awful lot of people come down 53, you know, and then go to Parker Street or continue on. And But if they knew there was a business that they needed to go to, it was on 53 and it's now four lane, you can get to Kingston pretty quick, they might jump off of Hanover and hit that business, maybe get back on Road 3 or split off to whatever other small towns they're going to. Mm -hmm. Right now it's just, there's really nothing down there. No, it's like a, there's it, it, a blank area. Yeah. Drops off right at 139. Yeah. And the others are picking up 14 to go into Hanson and Halifax, frankly. So there is quite a significant car traffic count in the center just moving through it for a little but see you know it's the intersection of 236 and 14 so you get one of the things interesting from the master plan for instance was the information we did get because it was a very was it like eight pages of questions or something yeah it was a pretty significant some of the things I learned the more people you think everybody goes to work in Boston, right, or whatever? It's all a north-south commute. This information some of the, was uh, most of it's east-west. There's more people going to work in Bridgewater and Brockton yeah. and wherever yeah. it is, yeah. or to yeah. Marshall and Babat. True. Then, you know, you think, oh, everybody just gets in their car and goes into Boston every day. No, no, not in, no. not in this no. town. No. You know, they're going to Plymouth. They're going to other communities and. In, in within a 10 mile radius. <coughs> so I work in Situate and I, I have to say there's probably four or five people I know that are Pembroke residents. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of local traffic that's going east west and, yeah. and slightly north south. But it's well, like not, go south to Plymouth. Yeah. 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 Well, it's become more of an employment hub. I over turn time. to work data. We have that information, you know, like who lives in Pembroke and where they commute to and stuff like that. Again, that's basic economic stuff. Yeah. But I'd be surprised at how a lot of people who live in Pembroke who work in Pembroke, too. Yeah. So yeah. you got a lot of businesses. Yeah. All right, so where, I'm just thinking, where should we, what's Wait, our next step with this? Hmm. Oh, could you tell us real quick what a uh, Chapter 43D yeah. expedited permitting? Yeah. I've okay. never heard of that. Okay. Let me get that. What am I in out here? Excuse me. I'm asking is we get a lot of business owners in here for site plan review and stuff like that and we say oh we'll, we'll get you on the next meeting it's only two weeks away and they all roll their eyes and go oh, another two weeks and these are some <laughs> handies out here folks but this um whoops this talks about um, what the expedited permits are Now this goes back, is this what this is? Mm -hmm. 
this is something that was uh, adopted in the state like uh, <coughs> 10 years or so ago now or better, mm -hmm. smart growth. Mm -hmm. I, I never find it really applicable to this town, mainly because it kind, kind of concentrated around like transportation hubs and... Well, Route 3, you know, Route 50, 53, 139, transportation hubs. I know you think of a transportation, you think of a train station or something. Yeah, like that. and I, I saw a lot of communities in those circumstances yeah. apply this, but it didn't. It didn't really. Uh, well, all we have is really the bus route, and that follows fifty three. Or used to ways. Well, it targets the shortfall in housing for low and moderate income households by requiring the inclusion of affordable units in most private projects. Mm. Well, we might have a little kickback there. <laughs> so you folks are pretty set for 40 B, as I understand. Yeah. Uh, not quite. Right. They're like 9.8 percent. Okay, well that's a hell of a lot better than a lot of you. It's like 2, 3 percent. I bumped into a guy who wanted a 40 B proposal in town, I don't know, 10 years ago where we were right there, mm -hmm. just about where we are today. And he came out of a meeting with the board of select, and I said, you know, we're pretty darn close, and, you know, maybe we could try to work something out, and blah, 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 blah. He says, if you're not 10%, I don't give a damn. 9.9 <laughs> is not good enough. And you know what it is? Is like I said, it doesn't matter if you're one-tenth of a percent below. If somebody comes in with a 200-unit project that puts you out to 15.9%, <laughs> it doesn't matter to them. It's a moving target. It's, it's, it's like a constant. It doesn't matter to that person, that developer. Oh, I'm going to just get you over the 10 percent threshold. No, that is not the way it's looked at. Friendly so it's either 10 or higher, <laughs> or you're open. All right. So should we schedule another one of these for? I'm not really sure how we should proceed here. Well, I think there's a couple of things on this that are kind of easy to say. Yeah, we'd love to pursue it, and why not just pursue it? Okay. What are those? Right? Well, the list of things that I gave you. Yeah, these like the guide, the guide to doing guy business, new business. Yeah. in Pembroke. We can get that done from you before the end of the year, and we've got it. Right. Yeah. All right, so yeah. why don't we say yes to that? Okay. I can and what about one, the inventory thing? thing? Oh, you can only, oh, we can only take <laughs> one thing. Do only, do only one thing. Oh, okay. okay. so we're going with this I, I think that will give you the most bang for your buck. This one? This yeah. one? Yeah. Oh, that's strange. Oh, uh, but what we'll if come you came back to us next year and ask for well, all the deals. But, there's a, but, but there's a couple of other things here that Bruce doesn't need to do, like adoption of the Massachusetts Community Compact. We, we could do that without you. You could do that. The town could do that. Yeah. Right. So I think that's something that we may want to bring up uh, with a fuller group. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got five here, but where, where we would make a formal request to the selectmen that, that we'd like them to pursue that. <coughs> yeah. In the, um, ed, in the EDSAT, I could leave a copy of this with Matthew, but down the road... And the EDSAT's, again, something we do with a, with a third party, not with you. Yeah. What uh, was your you'd document? Have get, you'd have to get some money from the town yeah. to do that. It's 45 But it's such a small amount, I mean, if, it's if 45 you persuade the selectmen, that it's a good idea. I'm sure they'd pony up the amount if they It's very it thorough. It. You know, I've been through several of these, and very bluestone, northeastern. They have a lot of community involvement. I, the communities that adopted this, I went to all the meetings, and there were several meetings, and they... Fire chief, police chief, everybody, they bring everybody in. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's a small, you know, you're concerned about, you know, a survey and stuff like that, a small number of people. This, these documents ask a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people in the community are involved in it. So it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's a good investment for the town to, uh, to do. I, lo I, I can't wait to do this guide for doing business in Pembroke. I think this is something that really you guys. So. In this guide, can you mentioned the other document, I didn't review it, but uh, <coughs> it gave an inventory, et cetera? Yeah, what I, I'll put in the, I'll put the inventory of available sites and stuff like that in there. That would be something that... Because that way if somebody wanted to locate a business in here, they could say, well, this is, these sites available. are available and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. I, we haven't done it in the other ones, but you know something? I think I'd do it on this one. Uh -huh. I think that would be a... Uh, yeah. A good example to send forward to other boards and the board of selectmen, for instance, for future funding is to say, you know, here's kind of a blended. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, in fact, here, here's how you find, here's what you do if you're interested in opening a business in Pembroke. Yeah. 
This is what secondly, you, here's some sites. Yeah, exactly. And if it was even updated. <coughs> well, it'd have to be updated. Quarterly or what? Even quarterly. Yeah. Well, I could show Matthew once I do How it. How to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, even if it was updated quarterly. Yeah. You know, then. It's not, it wouldn't be involved. You know, I know how busy you are, Matthew, but it, it's not a lot. Of, if you know what you're doing, I know what I'm doing, so it doesn't take me a lot of time to do it. But somebody could do it. You know, it's just a matter of going on the site and doing it. You don't have to pay anything you want on the site for it either. It's always good when you don't have to pay for something, you know, to get information. Right. So, do we want to um, have a motion to to ask uh, Bruce to do this guide to doing business in Pembroke? Just for the record. Uh, is that a motion? That's a motion. Oh, I'll second that motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> before you uh, before you run, I'll start on it later this week. I already yes. started on it. Before you run, yeah. you say that that's one document. Now there was a couple of other things. <coughs> you could probably, if um, <coughs> you're interested, in terms of um, the two, three areas that you could probably get funding for, if it's in the concept of a master plan, if you will, or at least documents to support. A master plan, historic housing, open space. Mm -hmm. We have funding for that through CPA. Through the CPA, yeah. right? That's what you have to use. So, if CPA. you wanted to see where our housing stock lies, yeah. and you want to come up with a proposal as you've done in terms of what you have available from economic development, everybody forgets CPA. They always think acquisition of open space, but it's housing yeah. and historic preservation. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, we're gonna get land we do a pretty good job yeah. of using it on all of those. Yes, we. I think we do. Yeah. Abington um, just voted CPAs. Yes. Good. <laughs> it's about time. Yeah. Most um, of our communities are CPA communities. But in any event, you know, we can do studies in those areas because I know those are three other components to a master plan, right? Yeah. And what you know, like I say, I, I hear your concerns about the traffic and stuff like that. The next time I see you guys. I'll get the tip list of projects and stuff like that. You know, show you where our, where Pembroke is as far as transportation projects. Mm. Our joint transportation committee meets the first Thursday of the month at noon time, and we feature if you're ever interested <laughs> in seeing what the what subs and pizza and stuff like that. But you know, mm. it, it's a uh, it's good group, and uh, you know, the list of transportation. I'll make sure that you see. It. Yeah, the first Thursday of the month. Of the first Thursday of the month at noon time. I'll uh, send the meeting notices to Matthew so you guys are aware of this. Or you can go to oh, yeah. www.ocpcrpa.org and go to our website and all the meeting notices are on there too. Sounds good. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank, thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Look forward to getting this document done. Great, great stuff. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. And get out of here. We'll be going on this. And Matthew, and uh, we'll you know keep you aware of the progress on this. Sounds so thanks very much for giving us the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to um, real quick just accept the minutes for five eight? Uh, move to accept the minutes for May eighth. Uh, as printed. Do right, we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Okay. Sign building permit for 9 Emily Lane. 9 Emily Lane. I don't know what that is. Yeah, yeah, I can find that. <clears throat> that was my issue. Um, okay. So for 9 Emily Lane, actually the, the person is right here. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> William Cushing, right? Yeah. yeah. And so basically, it's just it's just for um, a building permit. It's one of the John Hanna's project uh, subdivision. What's it? Stone Meadow Lane? Is that yep. right? Right. Um, and so he's. Uh, it's just to get the building permit, um, and and it's just a single family house. But Tracy wanted the planning board to sign off on it, just to verify that the lot has been released since it's the new subdivision and so forth. Um, we released everything. Yeah, we, we released, released everything. everything. Yeah, so I looked through the files and it looks like it's, looks like it's been released. Is that the writing slip? 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we, you need a motion just to have Tom yeah. sign off on it, right? make a motion that we allow uh, the clerk to sign the routing slip for what's the number, Emily Lane? Nine. Nine, Emily Lane. Yeah, I think it's lot four. Of, lot four. Nine. Of the suburb. Lot. But the address is nine, Emily Lane. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you got a motion and a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so. You just yeah. had someone you move in, right? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, at the end. Yeah. 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 So it's finally being built. Fitness place. Yeah, uh, How many houses are out there now? <coughs> um, right now, there's a total of uh, three uh, under construction. This will be the fourth, and uh, um, for a total of five. And you're both the owner and the daughter, right? Yeah. What yeah. is that called? It's coming along. It yeah. sat idle for a long time. No, you know, went through a recession mm -hmm. and all that good yeah. stuff and all that goes. Electrical. Yeah. yeah. I know. So you guys are saying that all of those. All of those lots have been released then. Yeah. That yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. So I'll know in the future that it's just big chunk of all cash. they have to do is yeah. In the future so. then, does uh, if, if this comes up again, does does the person actually need to come or can I just... No, we need to, we need to vote to allow the yeah. person to sign yeah. a writing yeah. slip. So it's yeah. to, uh, Anytime a writing slip. Yeah. Even though there's a copy of release in the, in the file. Yeah, we usually we usually vote to have the, the clerk sign the writing slip. Okay. It's easy. All right, so 220 Center Street project submit special permit paperwork. <laughs> yeah, so basically Don, I guess Don, Don can explain. He is, now he's he's done. I've got my weekly meeting in here. Every, <laughs> I like to come every <laughs> two weeks. Help us. <laughs> <laughs> so the question, the, the special permit, you know, obviously was approved two weeks ago, so I want to get it um, the goal of approving it early while we're waiting on the site plan, final site plan approval conditions was so I can get moving on the land, clearing the lots, and all that. I can't close on that small piece of land, I can't clear the lot, can't go any farther to the bank until the special permit appeals period is over. And that's 20 days. So I don't know how many, you know, yeah, we may resolve the, you know, um, site plan approval next week or it might be two weeks after that. But I want to get the special permit since that's been voted on and approved. Get that stamped in upstairs so my 20-day appeal period can start. I thought we already because did that. It hasn't been. We haven't up. submitted our decision. I think that's what you said. Yeah, I think that's so that's all. I mean, I know that obviously since the special permit and the site plan review are separate, but I just since it's been approved, I want to get it stamped in upstairs so my clock starts so I can start clearing the lot, close on that other little piece of land and. Clear the lot. That's something mm -hmm. that Matthew needs to do. Yeah, so the problem is we've only. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> Getting over something. But we've only had one before, it seems like, anyway, look, talking from Maryland and looking at the files, which was actually the the Smith excavating the, the, the mulch, I guess, sort of the mulch files and so forth in Massachusetts. Yep. And in that case, she did it all at once, like the one sort of, you know, the decision proceedings were in a all at once. And so. I don't know if there's really a way. I mean, legally, I guess it can be done, but I don't really know how one would do it separately. It would seem like it would be sort of duplicative in a sense. I think the the, the public hearing is next week, I believe, for for architectural style appearance. <coughs> so what I'm working on right now is a is a conditions for the whole thing. If you want me to try to put together something for a special permit, I can. But either way, I think it would be next week. We already approved the special permit, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's been a, it was approved. Uh, but you need something to go up to the clerk to get the yeah. uh, appeal it just process. Just has to be like the, some some form of paperwork <coughs> to to sort of verify. And I I would assume you need like a quorum of the board to sign it and so forth. I think also just from a I feel as though from sort of a a practical standpoint, it makes more sense. And I know this is not sort of ideal from your point of view, but just to not to sort of officially be signing anything to the town clerk until sort of all aspects of the project are. So, is there any um, approval has nothing to do with special permit? <coughs> that's the that's the conditions. Yeah, you can attach conditions, any conditions to the site plan approval has nothing to do with the special permit. Mm -hmm. I did check with Bob Galvin, and you know he couldn't be here, but he was he basically you know said the same thing. It's it's got it should have been the decision should have been sent up for the special permit because special permit's completely different. From obviously a site plan review because site plan review the conditions that can go on for you know however long but well these these were separate these things. just the only thing that was 
really connecting all three of these was the fact that we were running the hearings concurrently. Yeah. There's really nothing, they're all separate items. Um, well, we've never done this, kind of, we always they get through the conditions, they get signed and they get sent up pretty quickly. That's for the site plan. Yeah. I mean, well, if this gentleman just came in for a special permit only, so what's and we approved it, is there a letter that goes just with the letter, right? That yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just want the letter. <laughs> so so, so let's do it now. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. Let's get a a, a, a letter saying that we have approved yeah. a special permit for this site plan on, on X April. date. Have it signed by the chair and have it signed by the rest of us. All right. Yeah, I mean, I could write that up in five minutes. When's that next meeting? Twenty-first. Uh, <coughs> and you're going to be on the twenty-first, John. Is that right? Yeah. Let's do it now. But I mean, I think I, I don't mind releasing the special permit and, and filing it with the clerk who made it an approval decision. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do a letter. Let's yeah. do it now yeah. within this. All you have to do is notify the clerk of our yeah. decision. Right. And the other we thing don't that we decide, do we? We could just have the, the chair right. notify the clerk, can we? Yeah, I, he, yeah, I could submit it basically. The clerk, it's a notification. The clock is running on the other side. Nobody challenges our decision. Our decision. Then those 20 days will expire and. Special yeah, term yeah, would yeah. Be. I can, I can, I can file that with the deed and then I can close on the, the only thing I'd like to do is try to take care of the remaining things, which is basically the commercial building up front and landscaping as a shield or whatever. And then we'll sign off on the center protection one, which is the third one, the one that's the design be. and help. I did that on and I submitted those plans, but I'll I'll bring and present them next week and yeah. and uh, And then we can sign off on the whole thing. Yeah. All right. Maybe. And Due to the uh, graciousness of the town voters, uh, they uh, ended the mixed use, but they granted everybody until December 31st to get their projects in. December so 31st. even if you have amendments yeah, to your plan, January 1st, 2018. 2018. Yeah, you got eight whole months. If you have any amendments to your plan, I'd suggest that you do it yeah. in the not so distant future. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to, <laughs> I kind of want to dip my toe in the water to see what I, these things Because you've got an approved project now, yeah. basically, and it would be a lot easier at that. No, I know, I know. But I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you I'm that that was the graciousness I'm of the town's folk, so. <laughs> The good folk. The good you folk. You can stood the wind chickens and you can do anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A beehive and two chickens and you can do whatever the hell you want. You're a farmer and you don't need permits or nothing. Except you better not be selling marijuana. marijuana. <laughs> Yeah, stick a blueberry. We just passed the right. The agricultural. We did. We, we, we passed the right to farm to the place to every lot in town. We'll see how I, that yeah. works. Four blueberry bushes on a place. In there there you go. Oh. You're, you're <laughs> all set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a blueberry farmer. Uh, all right. All so right. we'll get the So we'll get the letter up to the clerk notifying of the special Super. permit. All I'll right. be there tomorrow. And we'll see you next week. Great. I'll see you next week. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Have a good week. Too. Thanks, Matthew. Sure. All right. Then I'm just going to keep on going. Go. Okay, remind you, site walk this Saturday, 529 a.m., blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, where's where yeah, that one? What's that again? Just 260, 280 Oak Street. To look at the parking up there. At the oh, at the bend. Yep, at the bend. Okay. Where is it again? Uh, 262 Oak Street at the bend. Go to the this dog. is interesting. Dog the the dog dog oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is interesting. Matthew, town hall update, possible where possible move of the planning board off? Yeah, great. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, this may have been mentioned Maybe by the, one of the guys in town government study committee or something. I may have mentioned it. But basically, the, what they're what saying is that seven? their plan, really? and this is coming from some people, not from Ed. So it's not clear to me how soon this is going to happen, or even if it's. It sounds like it's probably going to happen, though. Uh, their intention is basically to. Whose intention? I guess I don't know. The powers that be is is to have the. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell is that? I haven't met him yet. Come well, into this space. Five of them are in Wait, the room. Who's coming in to move to move our office into where the current board of health is on the second floor, and therefore, because they're creating the, again the DMI, um, you know, because they're merging building with board of health and CBA, oh, kind of, that's right. That would put them all together, and they would even maybe knock down. I mean, remember he was talking knocking down this wall. It's so not supposed to cost anything, so they can't and knock down the then, wall. <laughs> and then they would be able to sort of help each other and so oh, it's going to be great. Kind of they should just yeah. open up a little like window thing. Hello in there. So <laughs> save the cost. That's going to be so great. 
So, what, so then what will we but do? If we're up in the My board, question would be, what do we do about meetings and public hearings? Up yeah. Plan, up yeah. The That's a Board of Health. Well, they have, have central they have public hearings up there. Yeah, it's about the same size. I think it's about the same no, size. No, it's smaller. Is it smaller? I think it's probably about Doesn't it have bad it's mojo it's up there, it's though? A, <laughs> 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 a lot of bad things have happened in that. Well, this has got mojo. I think there are a lot more files, though, up there. But they come down here. It's maybe the way it's configured. It's kind of, of L-shaped. Yeah. Yeah. It's have. a different configuration. Yeah. I don't think they have as big of a room. You will have a sliding window. But though, it's that's pretty nice. big. Yeah, I mean, the last thing I do. <laughs> I mean, the worst case scenario is if we went, went up there, is like move our meetings to like Tuesday night or something. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. That wouldn't be the worst thing. Because then we could have the hall. Uh, the Next little, door. We'd have the whole building. building. You know, nobody comes in here on Tuesday night. Yeah. I mean, it would be... And then whenever the selectmen oh, force it, it, it looks like it's getting busy just duck next door. And it would yeah, be, it would be, it'll a, be a, a lot of work. I mean, to move all, all their stuff. And yeah, but I mean, I bet if you went through some of this stuff, well, I bet there's a lot of stuff here that isn't could be archived. But that would, I mean, either way, it's a lot. Got of, pictures. That's, that's a lot of. Uh, I'm going to attach to this. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> It's like 1970s motel room. <laughs> there you go. What? Yeah. <laughs> the flowers. Yeah. So should this letter just be like, just like two sentences or something? Yeah. Yep. yep. It's a notification of planning board. All right. Do we have the planning board it? meeting on 529 or 65? June 6th. Six, let's get a week off somewhere. Yeah, that's just line, because so there's because there are five Mondays in yeah. May. Well, it's actually, well, the 29th, we can't. That's Memorial Day. It's actually Memorial Day. It's actually right. Memorial Day. Day. So yeah. that. skip that. It's yeah. a three week period that's between right. May 22nd and June 12th, and it's already kind of getting kind of full. And so I hate to sort of be the bearer of bad news, but it might be advantageous to put in a meeting somewhere in that. Well, on the 5th is so what you're talking June about. Right. Why don't we yeah. say the 5th? Is okay. that good with everything? No, but you know. We, you don't need me for a quorum, so. Okay. Where are you going? To Philadelphia. Nice. Oh. Andy's already agreed to the meeting. <laughs> he won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can uh, Egan going to Philly, huh? Kelly mm -hmm. view it's draft? down there. Can Egan Kelly view draft of conditions for Bristol Estates? Oh, wait. It's oh, like oh, Irish. I guess it's like Irish. Oh, That's how yeah. they do it. Yeah. Sure. Um, I mean, does it matter? It seems okay. I mean, I guess maybe I should... I He's the petitioner, know. right? What's that? Yeah. He just wanted to, to, to read the them conditions over. The conditions for what? Before, for Bristol States. Oh. He wanted to view them like before they actually get signed so he can like, see if there's anything he objects to, I guess. Well, it's a subdivision. Well, plan. you get you get your uh, standard form. You could email them that. Those are everything that we read every single time. And then there's only conditions. And have we agreed to any conditions on his subdivision? Well, there's whatever waivers should be there. Yeah, but he waivers knows, granted. But he knows what those are. That's the standard form. Send them out the darn thing. Yeah, all right, yeah. You know, Outside of any conditions or, or whatever that we've already previously approved. Didn't we approve that subdivision? I think it's all yeah. done, isn't it? thought it was. We're still waiting for the the drawings that would show the uh, the easements for the rain gardens. For the rain gardens. It's a pretty trivial okay. thing, but still, Jeff Keller. I think note that, I note that to them saying, you know, that these this is not in the file or whatever. That's what's holding it up. Oh yeah, I mean, I want I want to actually do final conditions until we get those, but it, it'll probably be pretty soon. Um, I mean, I'm, basically, I just need to I just need to do it, but like 220 Sun Street is ahead and others that. But I'll get to it pretty soon. Okay. <coughs> so I don't see why not, right? Do we care? No, no. no we don't care. You say so, Dan. We don't care. All right. New zoning bylaws take effect one one eighteen. What does that mean? That means that the new bylaws take effect on one one eighteen. Yeah. So the question is like, <laughs> check. W would they? Uh, <clears throat> there is a question there, like, and I guess it's just to be aware, like, would it be the case that you have to actually get approval by then, or just that you have to submit your application submit. by then? Just submit. Because I asked Joel Bard that question, and I don't. Maybe I caught him by surprise because he said, "Oh, I have to think about that." Uh, no, and then no. somebody else grabbed him. <laughs> What's that? And then you said somebody else what? Somebody else then grabbed Joel and started talking to him, so he never answered. He never. No, it's whenever they submit the actual application comes in. Yeah. Well, call. I guess. Yeah, my fear is that find find out directly from him. if he has even a question in his mind. I'm kind of yeah. curious. I would agree with Jim and on the but surface, I but I. Right. Yeah, call. I don't have the legal background, Joel does. <coughs> All right. When in doubt. 
Call. All right. Call Joel. McCormick. Yeah, because I mean, I think probably it's it's when the application is received, but it'll be a it'll be a major bummer if like it turns out that it wasn't that and, and somebody did all that work and then it turns not, out like well, it's well that's why it is that way yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's not yeah. likely yeah well, he's the one who did them well dear if anybody, you, if anybody has, has an in the show from 1962 that they had oh yeah look at that's that. why it had the preliminary plan in there usually the application would come in the preliminary plan mm. and that would lock in zoning and then they turn yeah. around and get what you know yeah. want to do the full definitive exactly. subdivision yeah. well the point is is there's a good chance somebody's going to walk into this office one day in the next six months or so and ask you the exact exactly, same question. Yeah. Or even and the thing you don't want to come back with is maybe, probably, I think, potentially, <coughs> get an answer. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Let's make it clear as day. Yeah. What we think and what is law, two different things. All right. Macomber Lane subdivision. Where's Macomber Lane? I'm not sure. Where is it? Okay, so for that one, <coughs> need informal meeting? Question mark. They actually came. You might vaguely remember they came like maybe back in October, November. It's this weird thing where they don't actually. They need to do it as a subdivision, kind of for bureaucratic things. They they don't actually. It's the place where they used to sell Christmas trees, I guess, down in Hollow Yeah, remember on, on, on Center Street. It was off of Center Street. Oh, the yeah. antique oh, yeah. store. Yeah, yeah, yeah up in the woods. So, yeah. What about it? And so it has something? to be a subdivision. Even though they don't plan to hardly do any construction at all, you're going to have one paper, house. Paper they just want to convert like this sort of this store, this sort of bar. So why do they need to come houses. before us again? What are they looking for? At the time, they were just explaining it, and so now they're now they've got the drawings ready. Oh, um, so they so, want to plan some middle. And so they're going to submit, and I think <coughs> well, the board will probably be willing to introduce your potentially would be willing to introduce your deposit for the engineering review fee. Uh, <clears throat> and so I thought before they actually submit, we could check that with you guys because I know sometimes you lower it, and, and it seems like a case where well, it might as well look at it. Lower usually look at it first. Any, yeah. we look at it first to see. Yeah, I, thought we, to I thought we had gotten to the okay. end of that meeting where they were just going to go off and do what they were going to do. I don't yeah, know why. Well, well, if it's a subdivision way, we have to approve the plan, though. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it still has to be. It's technically still a full-blown subdivision submittal. Yeah. It's kind of weird because they're, they're even if it's one it. house, it's, a, it's it can be a subdivision, uh, you know, of land. But okay. that's because they have a basically, if not, they have a shared driveway <coughs> arrangement, right? The way to re eliminate the shared driveway arrangement. So, what do you want thing. for an application fee? Five hundred bucks? I don't even know what the fee is. So let's for look at it first. Property. I mean, we want to just take a quick look at the plan. We can decide then and there whether we but need the, anything. But the problem is, I mean, I have to usually I have to receive the application. <coughs> The deposit usually comes with the application, but I guess we could, I could just... Ask them to come in preliminarily again. That I mean, that's the to, other thing, yeah. You don't have to get anything up front. He yeah. comes in, he we'll shows us what he wants to that do. No, they can drop off the like, application. We, we just won't review it until they give us a check. Give, for give him a solid 15 minutes. Right. I, think, I, think I mean, I think, I think, I think I've already got come a back schedule in for him formal, so I think that probably makes the most sense. Come back in and we'll decide what we need, what we want to do. I mean, I know it's sort of an irritation, too. It's not entirely necessary, but it can't hurt anything. I'm going to bring all the stuff in the blank check. I don't think we're going to have an engineer. Two blank checks, actually. <coughs> okay. I don't either. I don't call anything that would trigger it. Yeah, I don't either. When you, don't either. When you, <coughs> you see, all right. when you one, see it, you'll probably remember it. One last thing, reminder, Matthew's upcoming vacation time is June 19th to the 23rd, July 24th through the 27th. Oh, yeah, just if you have any problems. Oh, I got a problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, I guess that's it. That's the days I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Matthew, checklist, everything done. Great. I make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I think yeah. so. Nope, that's it. It's not on the checklist. What is it? Then we, we adjourn this second. meeting. <laughs> for, this, for this letter, then, can you guys adjourn and then sign the letter? I guess you we don't need yes, to sign yeah. it, though. Do we? We just need to notify the clerk. Just mm -hmm. notify the clerk. Just I'll sign it. That. that a decision was made. Yeah. Can't we call us if we haven't signed off? No, we do the conditions, but we, we wouldn't have to sign off. Because previously, so Marilyn just did it kind of as part of the conditions. Like she, yeah. she did yeah, a thing. Yeah, but we're not doing it as part of the conditions exactly, so yeah, it can come from the chair. Yeah. 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 Just It's just a notification that we approved it, right? Okay. That's right. all we're doing. And the clock's right. running. He's going to have 20 days from the appeal. Two sentences. Yeah. As soon as she stamps it, just boom, and dates it, it's 20 days. Okay. Right. Yep.
Okay. So right, second. So you can stay here, I guess. All right. Are you typing? I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep typing. I can't Keep typing. typing. <laughs> um, somebody seconded, right? You I did. did yes. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye